Hi, this is Carl again. Well, you saw the big news today. Silke picks this out and uh, there is a uh, raw support for ST14, DP1 and DP2. And I can't keep my fingers away. This is such a great news. Silkepix has developed a really, really nice developer and uh, it supports a lot of different brands, but not the Sigmas, at least until now. Here we have uh, VMware Fusion and uh, I have my Silkepix installed and running and I selected a few shots that I think could be interesting to take a look at. These are shots taken with ST14, the DP1 and DP2. So let's uh, first of all pick a uh, good null that you know. Here we have a shot. Let's also take it from beginning uh, in standard setting. Oh, I see directly that something is wrong here. Japanese, right? Yeah, so I'll use my glasses and uh, mm, much better. Okay, so uh, let's go over to 50% that makes it more easy to see what I'm doing here. Okay, the thing is here you have presets. This is pretty much what you find in Lightroom. Just uh, go open the here is yes, the uh, hover over each item and you will see uh, a version of what it's doing. Um, some pictures really uh, can uh, utilize some of these really cool uh, looks, but uh, in this case we will not do so much. We can use the silky pixel auto white balance. It seems like it's selected for all pictures uh, from beginning and uh, it does a pretty good job. Uh, you can just hold the mouse here for different white balance options and you see that there is a lot to choose from. But we will use uh, auto. Same thing here, you can go into uh, <laughs> this one and see if uh, Silkepix finds a better exposure for this, but mm, apparently not. So let's keep the original. Here is a cool fill light. It's uh, a little bit like X3 fill light, but mostly for the dark part of the picture. At least this here, and then you can meet with the upper part. So and I like this. This is really easy to work with and easy, straightforward. Especially when you have the white glasses on. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at this. You go inside and you zoom in. This is now in 200% and you see it's sort of noisy and then you wait a little while and uh, it will become totally silky, like silky pigs. It's really really nice. Um, this is 5 second exposure, come on, and DP2. Yeah, it's, uh, we have some red color here. Yeah, look at that. Really detailed, fascinating colors, and looks really good. So, uh, this is the white balance here. The next one is the contrast. You have the different options. Same thing here, just hover the mouse over, and you will have it. And then you have something else here, that's like color options. So let's pick another picture. Let's pick another picture, shall we? Here we have a picture of Xiao Gang. He's my friend, we live together in China. Uh, my roommate from China, but he's not married with a Swedish girl. And he lives not very far from me. So this is a, a cool guy. We went out the other day playing, in La, uh, playing with a quadra. I know I tweeted about it. And the uh, same thing here. I have already uh, preset some settings. I've been fooling around with the different options here. And um, you see the colors can become really strong, like a little bit velvia, or uh, I think this one here is pretty cool. It um, makes it look damp and little. Mm, but I like it. I like uh, I like this software. And, um, there's a uh, really good color controls if you go deeper into the software. Uh, we can also take a look at another another picture here. Uh, I know this one was nice. Here's actually, I played with this picture a lot. I added some vignetting, which you do here. I think it was this one. And yeah, here we have the vignetting. And uh, as you see, it's pretty fast. It's not like uh, extreme, but it's uh, totally okay. And uh, this is a picture made by the DP1, yeah. So, and with a quadra, Elenchrome. So somebody is standing here, the whole thing. Bum, bum. And uh, in this case, it's also cool to play with the different presets. I know there was one where it's pretty cool, a blue sort of feeling. Oh, 
way, but it's a bit too much for us. Contrast became like, Wah! this one is pretty cool too. Mm, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know actually what it says, you know, my Japanese skills are not that good. Um, okay, let's come, let's go to another shot here, shall we? So this one, I know what was the, the bit tricky with Lightroom, but here it looks very nice. The one on my side is developed with Raw Developer. And uh, let's wait a little bit here. And you see it sharpens up really well. And it looks really good. Cool. Look at that. This is really nice, you know, all these colors. I didn't even touch the picture. This is like ooh, ooh, standard. And this is 120 to 300 lens from Sigma. It's really nice and pretty expensive. But it's really, really nice lens. Not because of this huge flare, but uh, because I have other shots that looks much better. Mm -hmm. Uh, here is a car shot that I took yesterday mm, and here they feel like it's really handy. I ordered a plate for this shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's so many things you can do here. You have uh, different colors you can adjust and oh, this one was pretty cool. That the blue was like and you have um, let's get a rough of exposure. You have also, I don't know what this is. I think this is a chromatic aberration or something. Yeah, it was, totally. Uh, but you also have another feature, this is really cool. This is like uh, distortion, you know? Uh, to get like uh, horizontal or vertical distortion. This is uh, stuff I only can find normally in uh, ArcSoft's Darkroom. At least the German version. I don't know why they have a, a bad English version and a good German version. Mm, we'll talk about that at another point, another time. Here you have also settings for the curve. Uh, you can see here I selected a curve that made this picture look darker. Let's go back to original. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool to have all these options. And uh, let's see what happens if we take this. Yo, look at that, it looked cool. Um, yeah, this is another shot, just... Uh, I played with it in, in here, you can see what it looks like from the beginning. Looks like this, a little bit boring. Then I saved my version. And ta-ta! It looks much better, and if we go closer, let's go into 200%. Look at this cheap head. It's a cheap head. <laughs> Uh, this is ISO 200, and you see it's really smooth. Uh, not here, but after the software is developing the, the part, it looks really nice. So perhaps there we can add some. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I, 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 mm, this is really nice. A little bit too much sharpening, but still. For print, for example, this would be very nice. Is that here? Yeah, that would be too harsh. Mm. Really nice software. I'm looking forward to the Mac version, which is out. I mean, there is a Mac version of CLKPix. Uh, so what we need is support for these raw files and also because uh, my Japanese is a little bit uh, rusty. And most people don't speak Japanese. But look at that. Uh, it's really nice. Hmm. I will try some more and I will come up with some more uh, thoughts about it. But uh, for now, Silky Pix is here to stay. I'm totally sure about it. This is awesome. All right. So goodbye and welcome to www.wittefog.com. And please add your comments. It's always fun, you know, to have a discussion about stuff. And if you want to screen share with me and we play a little bit together, then uh, give me a call. Bye bye.